Good morning from the parking lot of Animal Kingdom. Yesterday was the official reopening of Walt Disney World and they reopened two parks, Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. Yesterday, we were at Magic Kingdom. Today, we're at Animal Kingdom. So, I'm gonna go walk around Animal Kingdom, see what we can see as far as changes that they've made, see what kind of character interactions we can see, what kind of entertainment they have offering, and uh, also there's a new bag check here. So I'm interested to see how all of this stuff is working Let's head inside. So as with Magic Kingdom, we have to go through a temperature check first before going through bag check. So bag check is totally different now. Everything is hands off, hands free. You just leave your bag on and they have some machines that scan through your bag. I had my umbrella. They told me to just hold it out in front of me and I walked through and they said, you're good to go. Also bag check is really far away from the front gates now. You can see behind me, there's so much space. So just to give you guys some perspective, we can see some of the outlines from where security used to be here on the ground and how much closer it was to the turnstiles. Walking up to the turnstiles, lots of social distancing markings on the ground. And we still have an annual pass holder entrance too. Not that we need to use it though. So now we are officially inside of Animal Kingdom, just passing by the entrance to Rainforest Cafe. It looks like you can't get into Rainforest Cafe from the inside the theme park. You have to go outside of the theme park to get in and they are still serving food. But right now we're in an area called the Oasis. And this will give you a good idea of what the crowd level is like so far. So now we are out in front of the Tree of Life. It is pretty darn empty here. And I did want to point out too that they are still doing Wilderness Explorers. Looks like she has a microphone on so that she can be heard while standing further away from you. Hello. Alright. I don't think I see any new ear headbands in there. This balloon one is sort of new-ish. I wonder if it's the same price. No, it is $32.86. Have these always had this like beating around the outside? Do you see how it's kind of like piping? Or is that new? So my first stop is gonna be straight into Pandora, the world of Avatar, because that is the most popular place in this park, just to see the crowd levels and to see the wait times. So as we cross the bridge into Pandora, I noticed that people were looking over the bridge and it looks like we just missed a band on a boat floating by. So that'll be something we'll have to be on the lookout for later. We're headed into Pandora. Does not look busy at all. They've got some social distancing markings here. Wow. I think that these might be the social distancing markings for Flight of Passage. I'm going to follow them all the way up and see. You can see that the interactive element here that was a seed pod, where you would rub this like red section here and it would spray water, has been turned off because it is a high touch piece of scenery because you would have to touch it to make it spray the water. Following the social distance markings, they head out of Pandora, but then again, there's another set coming back into Pandora. So I'm assuming that the line just goes that way and then turns around and comes back somewhere and is heading over to Flight of Passage. So the social distancing markings lead all the way up to the front of Flight of Passage. Let's see what the wait time is. 25 minutes, not bad at all. And I talked to some people that wrote it and they said that although it says 25 minutes, you are walking straight in, nonstop. So the people that I talked to said that there still is a pre-show but it's split into two different groups because normally there are two pre-shows on this. What happens is both pre-shows are combined into one pre-show and the group is split into two. So you watch both pre-shows in either the first pre-show room or the second pre-show room depending on which part of the group you're in. I know that that sounds complex, but I think that I'm explaining it as best as I can. Basically, both pre-shows are combined into one pre-show, and you either watch them in the first pre-show room or the second pre-show room, depending on where in your boarding group you are. Hopefully that makes sense. And now we're headed over to Navi River Journey, which actually has a longer wait than Flight of Passage at 30 minutes. That's pretty interesting. Also, it is getting a little confusing. Hello! Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, it is also getting a little bit confusing because there are social distancing markings everywhere throughout the park. So you kind of have to go up to the front of the ride to find out where to get in line for it. Out in front of Navi River Journey, they have this drum area that used to be an interactive play area where the kids could come out here and beat on the drums. But now all of the drums have stickers on them that say, please do not touch. So that makes me think that the show, the drum show that happens here, probably isn't happening right now. Which also makes sense because that would draw a crowd. 
and they're not doing any sort of shows that draw crowds. An example of the social distance markings being all over the place and it being confusing is right here. These are social distance markings for Navi River Journey, but they start all the way at the entrance to the land. So I could see, and there's the ones over here for Flight of Passage, so I could see somebody walking in and looking at the ground and being like, I don't know what these are for, just being confused. As I'm heading out of Pandora, I can hear a boat coming by with what sounds like, oh, there's Mickey and Minnie down there. I'm gonna scoot to the other side as they go under so we can catch them coming out the backside. There they are, Mickey and Minnie and Pluto floating down the river. Very interesting. As we head out of Pandora and back into the normal part of the park, I wanted to show you over here at Pizza Safari is another relaxation station. And I believe that it's just outside. Definitely have sections out here where you can sit and relax and take your mask off. Also, there's social distancing markings for the relaxation station. Just in case there's a line to get in. And I believe Pizza Fari is closed because of it. Sorry, we are closed. Yep, so Pizza Fari is not open. So as we head towards the Starbucks, which is called Creature Comforts here in Animal Kingdom, which is open currently, I wanted to show you guys the crowd level in this section of the park. This is an interesting part of it because these are primates. These are cotton top tamarans. They have a little bit of extra social distancing here to protect the primates, which they're not even in there right now. But this is the normal enclosure for a cotton top tamarind, which is a primate. So they have very similar DNA to humans. I don't know if there have been cases of the virus going to primates, but I think they're just trying to play it safe. So as we get into the Africa section of the park, Tamu Tamu is serving, it's a quick service, like where you can get some food. And the tables for it are over here underneath the covering that is where Dawa Bar normally sits, but Dawa Bar is not currently serving. And Tusker House is also back here, which is not currently serving at the moment. Still a stage set up for bands and stuff to play here, but the bands do not play on this stage. They will be floating around the rivers, just like we saw Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto doing. I'm gonna head back towards the safari I believe that that could be something that's an open air ride that I can ride with an open air queue. We'll see how we do. I have heard people say from the cast member previews that they're allowing people to take their masks off on the safari because they have dividers between the seats, but we'll find out. I might ask to sit in the back row if possible. So before we get over to the safari, this little tent here next to this wilderness explorers place, hello, is where you would sign up for the specialty tours and animal interactions, which are not available currently. But we are headed back to Kilimanjaro Safaris. We're going to see what kind of social distancing measures they have in the line and on the vehicles. All right, five minute wait. Lots and lots of social distancing markings all the way through the queue. Seems like the five minutes will be us walking through the queue. Pretty darn quiet through here. It's very strange. I don't think I've ever been through this section of the queue. Definitely have a lot of social distancing markings all over the place and a lot of space for queue. It's kind of eerie how quiet it is in this queue. Normally there's families and kids and lots and lots of noise. But right now, all that we can hear are the announcements. So I don't know what this other side is. That's normally the fast pass queue over there, but we have plexiglass set up in between this side of the queue and the other side. Maybe they're separating the queue out into two different things because there are two different sides they can load. So maybe that's why they're putting these plexiglass barriers here. Lots of plexiglass. and separation in between each loading area. I asked for the last row and they told me I could do row eight. So 
I was thinking maybe the last row would have more airflow in it. But hopefully row eight will have just as much airflow. But this is what the safari ride looks like right now. We've got barriers everywhere. And good news is there doesn't seem to be anybody else in line. So it's me and one other party all the way up in the front of the truck. We do have other people coming in though. So we'll see how they load us. Luck of the draw, the party that was about to be loaded had seven people in it, which is too many people hey, for, I guess, the two rows. Twin day. Between the two rows in front of me. So this is good. I've got lots of space between me and any other people on the ride. Or may not see while we're out there. I will say the air movement when we are moving, because we did move a little bit, was okay. Like it was still moving throughout my row. Pretty good. Another thing that I noticed is like I can't see anything forward of me. I have to see all the animals from like here back. I can't see anything. Well, I mean, I can see a little bit, but it's pretty distorted forward. Like, you can see that sign there, how hard it is to read. Is that a copy over not. there? They are the only living known relative of the giraffe. They actually have skin-covered horns on top of their head called ossicones, just like the giraffe. And a really long tongue they'll use to grab leaves off branches. They can also lick their eyes, ears, and even nose if they have to. Tilted back I feel like we're going to see more animals on this safari because the they're not used to seeing people the here. Also the largest forest dwelling Let's see if we can see some hippopotami. Just ahead of us up here on the second hillside, coming up on the right up here, the grayish antelope at the top of this hill on the right. That's a greater kudu, one of the taller antelope here in Africa. They stand just about five feet tall at the shoulder. Oh, there he is. You can easily tell that one's also a female because it does not have any horns. Only male greater kudu have them, and they can get about six feet in length. That is the longest horns on any antelope. Also on the left-hand side there, a black rhino. There's actually less than 5,000 of those black rhinos in the entire world today. That's because they are poached every single day just for those keratin horns. Black rhinos can also weigh so around it seems 3, like what we heard so about people taking their masks off or being allowed to take their masks off was just something that was happening on cast member preview days because oh, I didn't right. hear anything Some saying you can take your mask there. off and nobody has taken their mask off. Because they share so that's good. Number. See some hippos also, over there. Also these white birds coming up on the left on the island. These are some pink backed pelicans because the feathers on their back turn a light pink color during mating season. Further out to the right looks like some zebras. We can easily tell they are black with white stripes and that's simply because they have a black nose. They also have a very powerful kick strong enough to break the jaw of a lion. And each zebra striped coat is unique to that zebra. No two are the same just like our fingerprints are all different. The tan antelopes out there to the right, those are some elands, are actually one of the largest antelope in Africa, fully grown male eland, get about six feet tall at the shoulder, weigh somewhere around 2,000 pounds, and yet still have no problem jumping straight up in the air eight feet high. Also on the right, nice and close, a giraffe over here. Giraffes are actually the tallest animals in the world, reaching heights of about 20 feet tall, fully grown. Yeah, the giraffes giraffe, are however, they're just there. around six to seven feet tall. Oh, and wait, here's one right here. a giraffe that's actually called a tower, a tower of giraffe. Looks like there'll be more later on, but coming up on the left over here, some African Dang. wild dogs, mostly laying in that yeah, cave out because I couldn't left. really see that They're giraffe because he dogs didn't stop because of the beautiful markings where on their fur. I could and they see are past one of the most successful hunters here in Africa, pretty much chasing their prey down to the point of exhaustion. That's because wild dogs work really well as a team together, and they all care for one another. Plus, they don't even bark. They make a high-pitched chirping sound. They also have four toes on each foot, unlike a regular house dog that has five. Over to the left, a few more giraffes over there. There's more just around the corner up here as well. The reticulated giraffe actually have more of a smooth, clean-cut edge on their brown spots. You can even see the ossicones right on the very top of their head. Those are the same skin-covered horns that the male okapi have. A few more zebras on the right, even a younger one there as well. A group of zebra that's called a dazzle. A dazzle of zebra. And another even coming up on the left, and two more zebras just around the corner. There's a lot of animals out today. Zebras on the left over here. More wildebeest ahead of us up ahead there. We actually rarely ever catch a giraffe laying down in the wild. It would take too long for them to get up if a predator was to come by. Which is why giraffes actually sleep standing up at night, which isn't too much of a problem for them considering the fact that they only sleep for about 30 minutes every night. It's not even one solid period of time. It's like five minute increments totaling up to around half an hour every night. 
and they pretty much spend the rest of their time eating. In fact, giraffes eat so much they have a dark purple tongue, so it doesn't get sunburned while they do it. Though they actually found out that elephants, they don't like to be around bees. So the farmers over in Kenya built beehive fences to put up around their fields to help keep out the elephants. Now that also gave those farmers a new source of income from the honey. The female elephants they're typically pregnant for just about two full years. The lesser flamingos, though, they actually got their pink coloring from their diet. Mostly the brown shrimp that they eat. And a group of flamingo like this is actually called a flamboyance. And just one flamboyance can have up to 200,000 flamingos in it. And we got some you cast members over here. Some of the chicks out there as well, the gray ones with the black legs Doing out some there. observations. Just a couple weeks old. Of the flamingos. Probably of the babies. They are much bigger than black rhinos. They can get about 5,000 pounds fully grown, and they have large, wide mouths, so they can easily grasp right off the ground. However, they cannot see too well, though. They can only see clearly about 10 feet in front of their face. Everything else to them is pretty much just a blur, which is why they rely on their great sense of hearing and smell to help them get around. And a group of rhinos like this is also called a crash of rhinos. The white rhinos also did not get their name because of their skin. It's actually a grayish color once you see them without all that mud on them. However, they got the name because when they were first discovered, they were called the white rhino. That is V-I-T, and white actually translates to wide. And as you can see, those white rhinos are very wide, so it's basically just a misunderstanding on how they got the name white rhino. Over to the left over here, we can usually find a few cheetahs hanging out around all these hillsides. But the female lions, they're typically the hunters for the pride, while the males, they tend to stay back and protect the pride. The lion's roar can also be heard from around five to six miles away at its highest. Their tongue also feels a lot like wet sandpaper, that's so they can easily lick meat right off the bones. Don't see any lions. Got some warthogs over here. Out. And sometimes will they eat? As you can see, they'll kneel down on their front legs, lay down, or even sit down. So I have to admit, the dividers between the rows made it very hard to see the animals, made it very hard to see what was going on. Things are like distorted in front of you. You can't really see the, the animals in the forward or backwards. You have to look at them straight out the side of the car. I don't know. Well, I guess that's as good as they can do for what it is. You know, we're, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, so it's as good as they can do. On the walk out of the safari, it must be a shift change or something, because I've seen more cast members than I have guests. Now that we've made it out of the safari, we're going to turn and head in this direction towards the Asia section of the park and Anandapur, where Expedition Everest is. I want to show you guys the stroller parking situation. Kind of a lot of strollers here right now. And I'm sort of thinking that cast members aren't touching them. But maybe there are. There's, this is still stroller parking over here. I'm going to I'm gonna be on the lookout to see if I see any cast members moving any strollers to new locations. I wanted to come into Harambe Market to see if any of these food stalls were open. And it looks like they are not. But this is definitely a nice area to come and sit down. If it's raining, maybe you can come back here and escape the rain. I don't, this is not a relaxation zone. So you're not supposed to take your mask off. However, if you are eating or drinking at these tables, you can take your mask off. And you can see more of the stickers on the table saying, for your health and safety, this table is not available, but ones nearby it are. Here's an interesting change. The area where the drums used to be, this used to be an area where kids would come and play the bongo drums, is now occupied by the African carver. So he makes different wooden objects, wooden statues and canes and staffs and kitchen utensils, but there are no longer drums here. Well, here it is. There is pin trading available. There's a pin trading board. We got a rope here so we don't get too close to it. And then they have some steps here that you have to follow. Choose your own Disney pins to trade us and drop them in the trading box or this bowl over here. And then point to the pin on the board up to two pins per guest. And the cast member will remove the desired pins from the board and enjoy your new pins. So there you go. So they don't put any traded pins back up on the board. It's such a strange experience being at the parks right now because there are times in different sections of the park where it feels like a normal day. Where there's just enough people walking around that it looks like a normal day and then they all clear out and there's nobody on the path. It's so strange. Like right now. Now there's basically nobody on this path. I'm not really sure what the criteria for having a booth open is, but you can see here Caravan Road is not serving out this time. But right across the way, Mr. Kamal's is. And you can see they've set up some plexiglass barriers so the cast members are staying safe. You get some chicken dumplings. 
or Mr. Kamal's season fries here. So right across from Up, A Great Bird Adventure, which is a show. I'll be interested to see how they're doing social distancing in there. There is a relaxation station in Upcountry Landing. And this has been kind of a lot of things over the years. Most recently, it was stroller parking and a blue meet and greet. So this is where you can sit and socially distance with your mask off. So I'm not going to go watch the Up Great Bird Adventure, but I did want to peek inside and see how the social distancing was being implemented in the theater. So Welcome it, to our theater. For the health and safety of everyone, please maintain physical distancing by sitting in every other row and allow at least six feet of space between parties seated in the same row. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Please enjoy the show. So you can see there are rows that are closed and then markings here saying this area not available. So a family can sit here or on the other side of the marking. Looks like there's a pretty good line out in front of Yak and Yeti. I don't know if that's just one large group or if people are not socially distancing up there, but yeah, there's no social distancing markings out in front of Yak and Yeti, that's for sure. So strange, like I said, there's just crowded sections of the park. Well, there was just an announcement that said, hey, look, friends, it's Mickey and his pals on the Discovery River. And so I turned and I looked and they are way over there really really far away been a long time since i've seen the saimang apes fun fact they're apes not monkeys because they do not have tails it really is kind of mind-boggling how this park ebbs and flows as far as crowd level goes also another thing to note is that the wilderness explorers are around in different areas of the park so here's another wilderness explorer location over here hello sort of near Expedition Everest. The Anandapur ice cream truck is still serving and Thirsty River Bar and Trek Snacks is also still serving. I just heard another announcement over here. Oh look, there's Donald and Daisy and Launchpad. They're definitely a good distance away. I wonder how close to me they'll get. So I guess they don't come anywhere near the sides here. They're just going back, backstage back there. It does look like Expedition Everest is currently down. It's not closed, but it's just down for the moment. Also, more social distancing markings for Expedition Everest all the way across the bridge here where you would normally be doing photo ops for Everest because it is right there. I think I found the best spot to see the characters coming by and it's right on this bridge near Expedition Everest because they all go backstage back here so they all have to come underneath this bridge. So we should get to see Mickey and Minnie and Pluto again. Look, there they all are. Here they come. On behalf of Mickey and his pals, have an adventurous day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. That's super fun. Now I'm crying. <laughs> there they go again. Bye Mickey and Minnie and Pluto. Thanks for floating by. So although that is the best spot to stop and wait and see them, you don't know how long you're gonna be waiting because there's no set schedule for these cavalcades, just like at Magic Kingdom. You never know when they're going to come out or who's going to come out next. So I stepped off to the side to try to figure out the names of these different boats going by. Like the ones that Magic Kingdom have specific names for their cavalcades. But I think that the ones that are going by here at Animal Kingdom are just called, like this is just Rafiki on a boat. The only one that I saw that had a specific name was Mickey and Friends Flotilla. But like when Rafiki's floating by on a boat, he's just called Rafiki. There he is, there's Rafiki. Like I said, it really is a great spot to stand and watch the characters go by. Just passing by a theater in the wild where the Finding Nemo musical is usually playing. Not currently. The Finding Nemo musical is not currently playing. Getting like inundated with characters. We got Chip and Dale and Goofy out there from Donald's Dino Bash. Boats all decorated just like Donald's Dino Bash too. 
and they did not come back underneath that bridge they left from underneath that bridge so interesting because those are like little teeny tiny parades that are just constantly happening throughout the day you just gotta look in the river and then you might see a character go by or you might see some drummers going by you might see some form of entertainment just like a parade another ebb and flow moment nobody over here another thing that i noticed too is that some of the ice cream carts aren't open which i thought was very strange not sure why this ice cream cart wouldn't be open. It seems like there's enough room for social distancing. Maybe they just imagine that there's not enough people in the park to justify having every ice cream cart open. All right, let's head into Dinorama. Basically nothing open back here. Wow. Because a lot of these carnival games are very high touch. But they do have some social distancing markings out and about. So maybe they're going to open them it's very strange because nothing is open in this section of the park primeval world is not open i'm not really sure why primeval world is not open i'm gonna see if i can find out there are a lot of rumors online as to why primeval world is closed but like no official announcement as to why it's closed some people say maintenance but most people are just not sure and here is the only other ride that i'm gonna ride today and that's triceratops spin and they have social distancing markings set up. Am I coming in the exit? Or am I, did, did I go in the right way? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So they've got all these social distancing markings set up. Basically what you do is your group stands on a number and that's what dinosaur you get on. Definitely easy to socially distance on this ride because it doesn't seem like very many people are riding it at all. Also, as I was coming on, I said, ooh, is it open? Can I ride? And they said, yes, we've got one more ride before we clean it. So I don't know how often they clean it. If it's anything like Buzz Lightyear from yesterday, it's every two hours. But uh, I'm not going to do the lever or anything like that. I'm just sitting in the car. I did have to buckle my seatbelt, but I will sanitize my hands after I'm done. Oh, that feels so nice. I'm going to use my umbrella to go up. Does it stay up if I'm up? Okay, cool. It holds itself up. You can get a good view of the crowd level from up here. It's definitely a way different feel in the parks now because there's not as much happening. There are not as many people, not as many characters. Like normally when we're flying up here, we would see Donald over here and maybe Goofy over there. But now we're not seeing any of that. It, it kind of feels like we're at a closed park, like no ice cream being sold. It was nice. So like I said, after my ride, they are cleaning each individual car now. Sanitizing everything, keeping it clean. So as we get off of Triceratops Spin, I looked over at Primeval Whirl and I noticed there's another pin trading location over here. Exact same procedures as the last one, but they don't have a sign out. So I don't have any pins to trade, but if I did, I would look at this board and I would pick two of them. And then I would put my pins inside of this box over here and take the two from the board. There's another Wilderness Explorers location over here. I feel like they have added way more wilderness explorers locations because they are all over the park in various locations so unfortunately i'm not gonna ride my favorite ride dinosaur and go inside of a toaster but we are passing by restaurantosaurus which is open and so is dino bite you can get a nice hamburger and some ice cream but of course all of the meet and greets are not operating at the moment most of the characters are out on the boats floating down the river i haven't seen Uncle Scrooge yet, but we did see Launchpad McQuack, whose meet and greet used to be down there. So in a little bit of very predictable news, the Boneyard is not open, which was a high touch playground type attraction for kids. But also there are some merchandise carts out in front of the Boneyard that are not open too. I would imagine probably because they don't expect to have a lot of foot traffic through this area. Hello. And as you can see, 
I think they're right. Not a lot of foot traffic happening at the moment. Just passing by Trilobites and that is open. And then another good spot to watch the characters float by would be on this bridge as well. Because I believe that they come from across the little lake area here and down this river. Oh look! So I guess this is where they enter the Discovery River and then the exit is sort of around the corner over there. So we can see Donald and Daisy and Launchpad coming through. It looks like Isle of Java is all set up to be open, but they are not currently open. But Flame Tree is open. Thank you. Fantastic. How are you? Stupendous, I say. Stupendous. <laughs> Stupendous. So it should be noted that any restaurant that offers mobile ordering is really pushing mobile ordering so that you don't have to stand in line and take up space doing social distancing. They want you to mobile order and then come back when your item is ready or when your mo mobile order is called. So like when we were at Magic Kingdom, Cosmic Rays only had one cashier open, but there was a lot of places for you to pick up your mobile order. So just be aware of that. If you plan on coming out here, mobile ordering is king. Another attraction that's open is it's tough to be a bug. I wonder how they're doing social distancing in there. I would imagine that it is the same as it was for Up A Great Bird Adventure. Every other row and then six feet between you and the party next to you. So I'm actually on a walkway between Asia and Discovery Island. Flame Tree Barbecue is just to my right over here. This is where Mickey and Minnie used to meet in their safari outfits. But the strange thing about this pathway is there are three food kiosks that are not open. So the one that's over here, and there's one right there, and then another one right here, as well as a merchandise stand that's not open. So it seems like grab-and-go type kiosk restaurants, or like booth restaurants like this. I don't know if you would even call this a restaurant. Food location? Doesn't seem to be serving currently. So like this one was called The Feeding Ground where you could get popcorn and beverages with alcohol. And I wonder if that's because of the alcohol sales. So right now, bars are still shut down in Florida, but if you are serving any type of food, you're allowed to be open. So, I don't know, this one seems like it should be able to be open because it serves popcorn, but maybe it's still considered a bar. One of the strange things about Animal Kingdom is that there are only two relaxation zones. And we showed both of those, one's a pizza party, and one's over by Up Great Bird Adventure. Sounds like there's another float going by. Looks like it's Mickey and Minnie again. Mickey and Minnie and Pluto. Almost sounded like a live band when I first heard it. So I asked about the Wilderness Explorer locations and the cast member here told me that there are actually less locations now because some places are handing out multiple badges. So the map is still fairly accurate. They should be around the area that is on the map, but you might get a badge, two badges in one place, rather than going to two different places. And now each of the places have a table to maintain physical distancing between you and the cast. Just gives you like a little barrier between you and the cast. Well, that's gonna do it for us from Animal Kingdom on the second official opening day of Animal Kingdom. It felt a little bit more crowded here than it did at Magic Kingdom. The safari was different. I'm glad that people weren't taking their masks off on that. And I'm glad that I could sit a few rows back from the majority of the people in the truck. So, I don't know. It was different. Triceratops spin was super fun. Other than that, there's a lot of quick service, a lot of like carts, and a lot of merchandise locations that are closed. Pin trading is still available. Totally different experience. But it, also, these announcements coming on pretty often. So, I don't know. It's different, it's definitely different. All in all, still a good day. We had fun, it was very hot. But with that being said, we are off and we'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to help. So today's organization is Give Kids the World. You guys know that we love Give Kids the World. What it is is an all-inclusive resort for ill children to come with their families and spend a week-long vacation, all expenses paid here in Orlando, Florida, go to the theme parks. Because of the pandemic, they have had to shut their doors. So they are not accepting any new kids or families to come on vacation currently. So they're having fundraisers and one of the fundraisers that they're doing right now is 
the Challenge for Hope Fun Run. Normally they do the Challenge for Hope Fun Run at Give Kids the World Village, their physical location, but because Give Kids the World Village is currently closed, they're having a virtual fun run. So, oh, there's a snake right next to me. Look at that. So, so take a look at the link in the description down below and sign up for a spot in the fun run. Do a little bit of fundraising for the village and have fun doing a virtual run. So thank you guys for watching this video.